everyone. This is Rebecca from Chemnet, and I'm here today with a brand new tulip tie-dye kit um, that I want to use to try to tie-dye some five-pointed stars on the front of shirts. Before we start folding the shirt, I wanted to just demonstrate on a piece of paper what we're hoping to achieve. Essentially, what we're doing with the front of the shirt is dividing it into tenths around a center point. So we're going to start by folding the piece in half. And now we want to fold it in an accordion fold into fifths. And so, you know, around an approximate center point. The star I drew isn't regular, but it should help. So we'll fold over about one fifth, flip it over, fold this section back. Flip it over, fold it back, flip it over, fold it back again. Now you see that this isn't super regular and perfect, so if I was doing this with a shirt or something that was a little less rigid as paper, I would adjust the folds as necessary to try to get my fifths equal. But if we start to open this up, you'll notice that on one side, We've got all of the points of the star. Then on the other side, we've got all of these valleys. Um, and so when we're dying, if we die along this angle here, then we should be able to end up with a nice five pointed star. Yeah, so hopefully, if we do this on our shirt, then we should end up with a star and not a square or a circle. Um, but I have not done this before, so we will see what we get. But the nice thing about having practiced on paper is that I can kind of look at this as I'm comparing my fold and get a sense of, okay, I should see three flaps kind of like on either side. And hopefully that will help us out as we go. This is take four. If this doesn't work, I'm bringing out the washable marker to draw myself a guideline. Um, <laughs> I have an extra small 100% cotton shirt and I have it folded in half so that the um, front center is along this fold here. And now I'm gonna attempt to fold this into this like I did with the paper. So the first fold, okay. Make this be the center point. I think I keep getting like six folds, or folding it into sixths versus fifths. Aha! Uh -huh. I think. I might have finally done it, guys. Or at least, approximately. Hey, I think this is good enough for my try. I've got one, two, three things on one side and one, two, three on the other. Good, perfect, I'm happy. <laughs> um, and we've got the back of the shirt over there. Now, Where's the center of the shirt? This is, this is the center of the shirt, okay. Because we don't want the star to end up upside down. So I am going to use a marker at this point because I want the high point of my star to be there and then the low point to be along this side over here. This is a Crayola washable marker, so it should come out. I want to keep this line in between here. So I'm going to kind of fold my shirt kind of just like along it like this. Um, let's see if I can tie this up. where I 
can still see my marks, but then maybe they'll just be some additional shape within there. Um, so it looks like for my main star, uh, that's all I'm coloring. So I guess it's not super big. I guess I could have gone bigger, huh? Let's. Well, I guess I couldn't go too much bigger um, because I don't have that much more space. <laughs> Color okay, so this is the top of the t-shirt, and this, I guess, would be the equivalent, about the equivalent spot. So what did I do? I said, let's sand fold this, so we still have this line. Yep, so we still have a line with both of those. Cool. Let's go down like that. Oh, sorry. All right, so that's one spot. Then folding you. All right, so in theory, this would and down would make one star, and that would make another. And so, what about the back of the shirt? As for the rest of this, I, after some deliberation, decided I want to do a scrunch up kind of thing on the back. Um, and in this area around the front of the shirt. So it really, you just saw me do this right there. Um, we'll tie this up, but this should give kind of some irregular tie-dye stuff around the back. But hopefully we get a star on the front. And, well, doesn't this look interesting? <laughs> I wanted to attempt this fold on a onesie as well. Take three. If you don't want to try this a million times, aha! I think I got it this time. Yeah! Alright, this gets easier and easier the more times you do it. So once again, I folded the center half in front as I started. And right here is the top part of my t-shirt. So I want the top of my star to be like that. And I guess my secondary um, star to be approximately like that. Whew. All right, and now what I did before on the other one, which okay, it's a little harder this time because these onesies are a bit thicker. Um, and I'm kind of accordion folding this. Let's focus on this blue part. Because this way if I die in between blue dot and blue dot um, then I sh in between the orange dot and orange dot, I should end up with a star shape. Uh-oh. And these markers, again, are the Crayola, Crayola washable markers, and so that should um, wash out. We'll probably still see their, them once I undo the shirt, but then it should wash out just fine. I'm going to go ahead and do one more rubber band over here, just outside of the star section. I think on this shirt I didn't really need to, but I'm going to do that anyway. 
And now, with this back of the onesie, I am just going to do a nice little scrunch. Um, I'll probably do, I guess, a semi stop. Okay. I like the tulip tie dye kits because it comes with tie dye with dye already in the bottle. I don't like them because the rubber bands are not great. Um, so I will put a couple more rubber bands around that section. But we have two theoretical shirts that could have stars on the front. And now we just need to dye them and cross our fingers. So the other shirts I folded the star on just the um, front of the shirt, not both sides together. But here I have another extra small kids plain shirt and I am folding it the exact same way but this time I'm doing both the front and the back of the shirt and okay I did not uh, go big enough so let's adjust my folds that's not so bad Let's adjust a little more. <laughs> okay, that's reasonable. Okay, so here is the front center of the shirt. So we want this to be a high point of the star and a low point of the star. This time, since it's double layer, yeah, there's not, it's so thick that I can't really fold there, so I am going to just do some concentric rubber bands down the length of this shirt. and hope that I can actually create a line here. I'm not really sure. I guess I better... Well, it still won't be... Hmm. Well, we'll see what we get. <laughs> I'll just try to keep the first die along that angle. So maybe I'll redo this and just kind of bunch it a little bit like that. Try to have this kind of on um, an angle. Well, okay. There's a shirt anyway. Alright, let's try this fold on this last onesie. Starting a little higher up. And it's not. Going to be perfect. So you can see I'm already anticipating my correcting. But this shows that I'm improving. It's a lot easier to fold it when you have, um, it's significantly easier to fold when you have the shirt folded in half altogether versus just trying to do the front. Okay.
okay with the snap part I'm just kind of this is also I think an 18 month onesie okay. la 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 random crinkling okay my plan is mostly to do one color for the star leave a bit of a white border and then do a second color for the rest so the reason why I enjoy these tulip one-step kits is that they already have the dye in the bottle so I just add water to the fill line and I'm ready to go. Uh, when I have to add the powder to the bottles myself I end up making a colossal mess. So these dots that I made, I made with just washable Crayola markers and they should come out after the fact. Um, but since I pre-soaked these shirts by letting them, uh, by washing them in the washing machine and putting them through the spin cycle. There is almost no liquid in, in the shirts, so it should take dye really, really well. And I'm trying to be careful and to maintain, this was the, the last shirt that I did just now. And I want to apply a lot of dye. Am I blocking? Um, but try to maintain the star. Alright. I'll leave that be. And then here is <laughs> the, f the first onesie that I did. Um, trying to... I have no idea if I'm going to get a star, if I'm going to get a weird uh, pentagon <laughs> or something in here. Um, because I folded this kind of strange. Okay, but hopefully that gets me somewhere. Okay, so I tried to stay within, I guess essentially the blue dots for, to kind of mark where I would need to go for the star and some of them I folded um, in a way that should help um, me do that. Let's move these ones over here. Let's do the star parts before I go on to the back. Okay, so this one I barely folded at all. Let's do a line. So the nice thing about there being very, very little water in here is that it can take a lot of dye and the dye should not spread a ton, hopefully, if I did this right. I don't know if I did this right. Um, <laughs> but that's the fun thing about tie-dye. It'll still look really cool. However it ends up, it just might not be exactly what I expected. All right, so if I can see on here my orange markings, I'm going to try to leave a white segment in between my star and how much am I blocking? I'm going to try to leave a white segment between my star and the rest of the shirt. So this kit that I got this time said that there was enough 
for six projects and there is yellow tie-dye that I am not using today. Uh, and these are also kid size projects so I am fairly confident that I should be able to dye them completely but before I add more dye to this first shirt I want to add some to the second because I'd hate to end up with not enough dye. This is a nice red. Okay, I'm almost out of dye. Um, I can still squeeze these sections some. So the nice thing so you can see I'm squeezing this right now to try to like distribute some of this dye through here, but it is not, um, nothing squeezing out. So that is a good sign and means that I did not add too, too much dye. Um, I like to always have plenty of paper towels on hand for when I am dying. Now, hopefully I mixed the dyes enough. You see some particulates on here. Well, I'll try not to worry about that too much. But man, it looks like the uh, estimate of six projects is pretty spot on because I've done, I'm, I'm out of red and I am done with the bottle. Okay, and on to my blue. Oops. Uh, trying to ignore that orange section that is, uh, whoops, I definitely got some red on here accidentally. The orange will be gone once I wash this. But it does kind of look like the red is, the color almost looks like it's breaking a bit. You see how we see this orange kind of coming out from that red tie-dye? That's kind of cool. And it almost looks like there's some purple from like spreading out from the blue. So that would be very fun. Blue is, this is a really dark blue. Um, I'm having an easier time spreading this out, it feels like, than, oh, sorry guys, than the red. Doo, doo, doo. And these are bigger shirts than the onesies, but the onesies almost look like they're bigger than the t-shirts, but the onesies are made out of a lot thicker cotton. Okay, let's try squeezing this a bit. Oh. Some came out. Eee. I've seen some people do this on like cookie sheets and stuff, so anything that drips out can drip down. And that's pretty cool. But, pink E, I love tie dye. Okay, I'm gonna add some more blue now. Give this time to. Soak through. May as well use this all up because who knows when I'll tie dye again. <laughs> Hopefully soon, but I 
All right. I am going to place these in Ziploc bags and then tomorrow night we will open them up. I did something a little differently for the reveal this time. I went live. You can see a full unedited live reveal of these tie-dyed t-shirts on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. But I edited it back a little bit for this video for some clarity. The t-shirt sat with the dye inside plastic bags for 24 hours before I opened them up to see whether or not this dyeing technique worked. I dyed these 100% cotton shirts with a Tulip brand tie-dye kit. Uh, it's one that I've used a lot before and ooh, some white patches. All right, so I crinkled up that end and now, oh man, I really hope this worked. If it didn't, it's, well, basically this will either be awesome or it'll be a bit of a flop. So, let's see, okay, <laughs> oh wait, no, that's half of it, because it's on the bias. Let's turn and, oh, you guys, look, okay, can you, can you see? No, stand back a little bit. Look at the star! I did it! Wahoo, all that hard work folding into fits? Oh, you guys, it's a star on one side of the shirt, and then it's just like a crinkle tie-dye on the back. This totally worked! I can't... I can't believe it! I mean, it's not the greatest star, but this looks like a star, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a... it's kind of pentagony, but it is a star! I did it! <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm just a, I'm just a little excited right now. Okay, so this, obviously, on the onesie, I'm going with the opposite colorway. But let's see, I, I really like making my kids dress up in coordinated outfits. Oh, so there's a little bit of orange right here. And that's because I used a washable marker to help mark where I wanted to do the points. And so that some of the orange should come out. But some of it actually is probably from the red as well. All right, let's see. Oh, you guys, I did it again. This one's more of a pentagon. <laughs> but, ooh, but yeah, you, actually you can see the orange mark that I did. I tried to leave some white frame around it. This isn't a super obvious star. It's star-esque, but there is definitely some bleeding. And so on this one, also on the back, it's just the red. Um, but, okay, so this time, you can kind of see the way the shirt is folded, uh, because I did not scrunch it up after. Let me unfold slowly. This one might actually be a better star. Stay a little further. Okay. Although that's not super pointy. Okay. Alright, so here's half of it. And here. Oh, that's a star. Oh, oh kind of looks like a starfish. Aww. Oh, our, our three year old will totally love that. Okay, so here's the front. And on this one, here's the back. I was totally, totally expecting this to flop. <laughs> I was expecting to end up with just blobs. Um, so this one's another 18 month onesie. The extra small shirts that I did are, I think they're Hanes, um, and this, the onesies are Carter's brand. not as good. It definitely kind of looks like a some kind of alien or being more than a star. Like there's like a big head and then arms and legs. I guess it's a plot test. Okay, so this one is probably the least star-like, but the Carter's um, 
The, the Carter's onesies are a thicker material, so it was a bit harder for me to fold, especially when I was dealing with the fabric doubled over. So here we have the finished shirts. I actually didn't rinse them before I put them in the washing machine, but I did put them through the wash three for three different cycles with soap, and I will I'll make sure to wash them separately for a couple more washes before putting them in with my other laundry. So this is the first shirt. Um, I really like this star. It's more of a subtle star and kind of looks like a turtle. And this is the shirt that I only folded into the star shape, the front side. And here is the onesie that I did with that same technique. I think that this one looks pretty nice, and that's the back of the crinkle. And down here I have the two-sided shirts. And because I didn't scrunch up the point as much, the, the star is a little more defined. Um, although, I think this one kind of looks like a starfish with two little eyes <laughs> right there. And here is the onesie. This one probably did not is the one that I like the least, but it still is star-esque, even if you do see some kind of strange alien-esque creature there. Overall, I am really, really happy with this technique. Um, this was the first time I had ever tried making stars out of tie-dye. And so for our first attempt, I think that it went pretty well. Um, certainly, there could be some improvements. The stars could have sharper edges and other things that we could, you know, if I was going to do this again, that we could attempt um, to make them a little more apparent. We did achieve a shape with tie-dye. These are 100% cotton shirts. They are child size, and I used a tulip tie-dye kit to dye them. Thank you so much for joining me live for the reveal of these tie-dye t-shirts and for dealing with all the technical difficulties. This was my first time trying this folding technique, and if I can do it, you can too. And so hopefully what I did today um, and this video can help you attempt your own star in the future. There are certainly improvements that I could do on my own star technique, but at least I've got the folding down and now I need to work on my dye application. Thank you so much for watching this tie dyeing video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye! Snowflakes? What else do you kind of see? This, this, well, it, it, this one's white. These are both sliders. Yeah. What These kind, are both mine. What kind of shapes do you see? Stars. And what else? Make a circle. Oh, do you like them? Yeah. Are you glad I made them? Thank you for laughing this.